This is from Lou Dobbs, Admiral. Obama conspired with America's enemies to kidnap Chris Stevens. And, man, I got this from Colonel Schaefer, that this was something that was bouncing around the Pentagon. He couldn't confirm it, but he said that was one of the main things. They knew it was, there was a cover-up, and it was staged. They just didn't know exactly what it was. So you can, in any criminal investigation, you can tell when you're not being told the truth and that something stinks. You just don't know till you get deeper or someone confesses or till you have prima facie evidence, you know, caught red-handed of exactly what went on. But we know that there was a cover-up and they got a bunch of weapons and it was Al-Qaeda and there was a stand-down order for almost eight hours. So this is a big bombshell. Talk about info bombs. This is it. It's even worse than we previously thought. A retired four-star admiral uh, is reporting that Barack Obama intentionally conspired with America's enemies to stage a bogus attack and the uh, kidnapping of an American ambassador so he could be negotiate the release of the hostages and bolster his mediocre approval ratings just prior to the election. Now, why does that make sense? Most of the security was ordered off. They were driving out, but there was a double cross. Some of them were killed at, at, at highway checkpoints. It was the Al-Qaeda forces put in years before to take over Libya in Benghazi, that western area on the border with, uh, with Egypt. That's one reason Mubarak had to be taken out. He was like, I'm not going to help Al-Qaeda get arms in Egypt and then overthrow uh, Libya, and so they had to remove him. That all came out. So we know that went on, but it fits into this story because, because a lot of people were told to get out. That's come out. So, so, so they wanted to have just kind of a stage firefight, have him give up and uh, hand uh, Stevens over, but the two sheep-dipped Navy SEALs, and by sheep-dipped above Navy SEALs in the CIA, there's many levels above Navy SEALs and Delta Force folks. They came running down and didn't, and didn't follow the order to stand down. And so they started shooting them from behind, killing scores of them. Some reports are over 100. And so uh, the Arabs went completely wild, and the rest is uh, history. You know what happened. They were going to use the kidnapping also as a cover to get into the three warehouses with all the missiles and then claim, oh, that's how they got them. So they have plausible deniability. Here's the admiral talking about that. And I, and I really think this theory is probably what happened. Here it is. This is a peculiar response on the part of the CIA. Well, it is at that. And it's also peculiar why we never have tried to secure our consulate. That could have been done immediately. And much information could have been protected possibly even more lives saved. Um, what's questionable is CIA's role and the Director of Naval Intelligence role in the bogus cover-up story of that this was a reaction to a, a spontaneous mob in a reaction to a video which nobody had seen. Former top admiral, four-star admiral, that's as high as it gets, um, coming out on Lou Dobbs. Admiral James Lyons saying the attack on the American consulate in Benghazi was the result of a bungled abduction attempt, the first stage of an international uh, uh, prisoner exchange that would have ensured the release of Omar Abdel Rahman, the blind sheik. But something went horribly wrong with the October surprise, although the Obama administration intentionally gutted secretly at the consulate uh, prior to the stage kidnapping Former Navy SEALs Tyrone Woods and Glenn Doherty disobeyed direct orders to stand down, saved American lives, single-handedly killed scores of attackers. The attackers, believing that the Obama administration had betrayed them, tortured Ambassador Stevens and dragged his body through the streets. It's clear Benghazi Gate is only a small piece of a much larger operation, an attempt to conceal what the new American calls the Obama administration's full role in helping violent jihadists and self-styled al-Qaeda terrorist. Uh, and uh, it just goes on. It just goes on from there. So th there he is saying it was a staged prisoner exchange. And, and, and really, you look at it in hindsight and all of our sources, that's basically what it was. Getting most of the staff out, then trying to shut them down so they wouldn't talk. And see, that's what's good about this story. It's a very sad story, but the good news is that the, most of the government's not evil. Most of the government's not corrupt. In fact, they're really hardworking, upstanding people, especially in the military. I mean, they, they, they're not trying to hire idiots for some of those more specialized positions. And it's small criminal networks operating from the top. This happens throughout history. Or rogue groups throughout the structure, but as you get higher up, it gets easier. 
who are doing this and they're always getting their operations blown because other people who aren't criminals come out and speak out about it. Now, they had uh, destroyer captains come back and tell the San Diego Herald Tribune in 1964 when their rotation ended, uh, when the ships came back six months later, it was in the paper. I've got a copy of it. I've shown it on air before. You can look it up. It was never a rumor that the Gulf of Tonkin, oh, there's a conspiracy theory the Gulf of Tonkin was staged to get us into the Vietnam War with the Gulf of Tonkin resolution. Well, no, it became a conspiracy theory and a rumor when those two captains and others went public, saying our ships were not attacked. This appeared to be a provocation to get us into the war. Well, as you know, uh, on the 40th anniversary in 2004, they released hundreds, well, they released thousands of hours, but there were hundreds of hours just on the start of the Viet the official start of the Vietnam War um, in uh, 1964 uh, with LBJ and Robert McNamara. And they're, and they're showing you some transcripts of that on screen right now if you're a TV viewer. Uh, but it, it, boom, we were right again. Well, we weren't right again. We didn't look into a crystal ball and say the Gulf of Tonkin was staged. I remember being on Discovery Channel shows and others where they would go, Jones thinks everything's staged. From uh, the May in 1898 to the Gulf of Tonkin in 1964, uh, to blah, blah, blah. I don't think they were staged. It's come out, they were staged. It's kind of like, Jones thinks we orbit the sun. No, I don't think that. Jones thinks water is H2O. I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm not smart, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just informed on things that matter. What I am is instinctive. I instinctively don't like to be a slave. I instinctively take it personally. I instinctively get aggressive. I instinctively have defense mechanisms that activate in me when I see total tyranny taking over. I was a mainline libertarian Republican in 95 or so, and I got on air and I was given so much info by people that were more awake than me and military people and folks that worked at the NSA and telecoms and because nobody else was covering this stuff then. It didn't matter if I was a stuttering kid on the radio. And because of that, because I was a conduit and I came off unprofessional at times, the system thought I'll just ignore him. Just everything worked perfectly by the grace of God that I was able to get to this point. But I know their program. I've been doing this 19 years, folks, and I know their program, and I know I'm right. And I know that by the grace of God and your prayers and your action, all the good people in government, out of government, you name it, we have held this back for so long. And what I was getting at in that last rant is Benghazi, people always say, oh, if they staged Gulf of Tonkin or if they staged 9-11 or if they staged Benghazi or if they staged Fast and Furious or if they staged all this stuff or the Boston bombing, it would come out. It has come out. It has come out. I mean, Cy Hirsch has gone public saying 100% of the bin Laden raid is fake and a lie. That's a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner who I know listens to the show. Keeps saying he'll come on for years and never does it. And I'm not criticizing him. I get being busy and not wanting to do more work, but or, you know, being criticized going on that radical show. Like, come on, man. Those labels don't work anymore. Yeah, he said, one big lie was the quote. Pulitzer Prize winning journalist slams pathetic U.S. media. So, so here's the issue, ladies and gentlemen. The denial is not getting us out of this. It's making it worse. And I know our listeners are not in denial. But it's now time to get the general public.